Alright guys, what's up, it's Zerktik here, and today I have a video for you guys that you guys have probably known a little bit about, but I'm here to completely, you know, talk about everything. So, Symmetra is getting a complete rework. Now, this rework is going to change everything, and honestly, I think we all know who's to blame here, Overwatch League. Yeah, and it's sad to say, but Symmetra has not been picked once in Overwatch League. So, in Blizzard's mind, they're like, okay, well, there's something wrong with it, right? No, it's just that she's not a character that people really want to pick in Overwatch League, you know? It's just not a... Like, and they want her to be a pick. They want every single character to be good, alright? So instead, they said, make them OP first, and then we'll nerf them from there. I guess that's how Blizzard thinks. So, just, there was a kind of an interview, right? So, I'm gonna just kind of read through the interview, highlight the main points. So the first thing, Symmetra rework defense or support? Symmetra is currently worked on being a defense player. Now, they said they tried to make a healer version of her where the turrets do healing instead of damage, but obviously it felt super awkward because Overwatch moves too fast, and that didn't work out. So now, they're playing her turrets, so instead of you having to, you know, sit there and deploy on the wall, do that little two-second animation where she moves her fingers a lot, now, you can just throw the turret. You can throw it infinitely. So, like, Say you're on Numbani and you're sitting at the cart defending the first point. You can throw it to the bus. And now there's a turret on the bus. So that's kind of how they're saying it. It has an infinite line. So like, literally it goes infinitely in a straight line. Now, they said the projectile speed isn't super fast. So the enemy players can see them coming. Now, but they can't shoot them out of the air. Which is insane. So like, literally you know a Symmetra turret's coming. So you just have to prepare to take at least like 2 damage or something. Um, they said, what's, like, kind of, what's the point of being able to shoot them directly at people? Said, there's no other changes to the turrets. They've lowered the max number of turrets to three. So, now she has less turrets to throw out. Uh, but they've increased the damage and slow potential. So, instead of there only being, instead of there being more turrets with less damage, now we have less turrets. They do more damage and they slow you down. Now they have 30 health. Through this number, they probably change over time because of the testing and, you know, the way that Symmetra is going to work. But they still die pretty easily, pretty much a one-shot for everybody. Um, now, like, the thing is, people are saying that, no, the turret's going to be completely useless if she only gets three. But Goodman says, so far they've found that the turrets are much more powerful this way, not less. Then you have to keep in mind, like you're, like you're deploying two turrets at one time now. Since there's more powerful individually, you'll lose a bit of map coverage, but overall the turrets are completely and actually more impactful, not less impactful. Plus, spending less time to redeploy turrets frees up to do other things at one time. And now they say, are you guys looking at potential in changing her weapon? Now this is one of the big ones. They said, yes, we're still trying some things, but what's working pretty well is that her primary fire has changed to no longer lock on her targets, but works as a straight beam, which is fairly thick and it has increased range, okay? So kind of think Zarya. It still has the potential to gain extra damage and dealing more damage over time than it does now, but instead of going from 30 damage to 60 damage to 100 damage per second, it's currently 65 damage to 130 damage to 195 damage per second. However, now it takes a combined two seconds of damage to level up. So basically what that means, guys, is that, you know, instead of you holding left click and auto aiming to the person and every sec every second it goes from 30 damage to 60 damage to 120 damage per second, now you're going to have to do more of a tracking uh, type of thing because it's a straight beam more like Zarya. So you're going to have to track onto somebody, but in first track you're doing 65 damage. All right, and then two seconds later, you'll be doing 130, and two seconds after that, you'll be doing 195 damage per second. So, technically, if you have really good aim, you can kill any character in the game in six seconds, but that's if your aim is sensational. So, this means her weapon has significantly more potential, but it's more difficult to have max power. Also, now, hitting a barrier is currently generating ammo instead of consuming it. This means not only is she good at taking down barriers themselves, but she's good in just generating charge off of barriers and using that charge to take down enemies as well. So let me read that again. When hitting a barrier, it currently generates ammo instead of consuming it, which is kind of weird. So when you hit Reinhardt's shield, you're going to generate more ammo. So does that mean you can shoot infinitely? I'm not really sure and I'm kind of confused on that. If you guys know anything by it, let me know in the comments below. Her alternate fire is still a charge up large projectile, but it has a bunch of important charges as well. 
First off, it charges to the max charge in one second, down from two seconds. So it, it used to take two seconds to make that huge ball and then it flies at people, but now it only takes one second. Next, the projectile speed is increased significantly, so they're a lot faster. It changed from 10 um, m slash s, m's per second, sorry, 10 meters per second, now it's at 30 meters per second. So it's moving three times faster than it usually does. Lastly, instead of piercing enemy enemies, it now explodes on impact. Now, that's kind of crazy, guys. Now that we're thinking about this, it goes three times faster than it usually does, and it's going to explode on impact and have an area damage of about 130, with a large percent of the damage coming from direct impact. So the explosion doesn't do as much damage, but the direct impact does most of the damage. So if you directly hit somebody, you're doing a lot of damage to them already. Um, now on to the next part. It says, could you please tell us what you're considering for ultimate? Now guys, this is something insane. Honestly, this is what like, you know, kind of surprised me the most. I guess at this point I should probably have posted everything at the same time since everything always makes more sense in context. He says, her teleporter is moving to her E ability, and her photon barrier is moving to her ult. Now you guys are like, what? This doesn't make sense. That's what I was thinking, but then I have to read on. Her teleporter now, her teleporter now works as follows. You place the exit like you normally do, except now you can place it 25 meters away instead of having to place it right in front of you. When you place the exit, the entrance automatically gets built right in front of you instead of at your spawn. It lasts only a short amount of time, but enemies, can, but allies can use it freely as they normally do. But there are some new things that the teleport can do as well. So, first off, let me explain that part. Now, since it's her E ability and you can place it about 25 meters away, right? So, before the teleporter, the one end of the teleporter always spawned in your spawn, like in your spawn area. That's always where it was. But instead, now you can place the teleporter 25 meters from where you're standing. I don't know if it has to be in your eyesight or if you can kind of look through walls to see so. So, essentially, this will help on a couple of maps, but the teleporter will be a lot different than it usually is. And it lasts for less time but your allies can still use it freely as they do before. But there's new things. Now listen to this, guys. They're experimenting with working things that you can throw through the teleporter, such as Torbjorn turrets. How that works, I don't know, right? Diva's exploding mech. Just imagine an exploding mech flying through the map because it came from a completely other place, like Spider-Man and Doctor Strange when it comes to Infinity War. You know, I'm just thinking of a lot of possibilities that's kind of crazy when you really think about it. Now, the health has been lowered to 300, and the entrance is now attackable as well. So, if either die, it's destroyed. So, the very first one can be destroyed now. Where you run in through the teleporter and where you run in out can both be destroyed, and it only has 300 health. So, I'm guessing this is kind of like, it's going to have a shorter cooldown then um, we might think kind of similar probably to Mercy's res or maybe a little bit less. Now, here's her ultimate. Her photon barrier has moved to her ultimate, and now it's very difficult. Instead of placing a moving barrier, she places a static barrier wall that is effective and infinite in size and has 5,000 health. She places this wall like Mei places her wall, which means you can place it at a range and you can also change the orientation. This is fairly early still, but they recently worked on visuals, animations, sounds, etc. And it still has different little ways to figure out. Now, honestly, guys, what do you think about this? Now, I don't really understand this because now they're saying that it has an infinite range. So, like, if I'm on, I don't know, I'm thinking Anubis, right? And I'm in my spawn. If I push the wall out near the stairs of Anubis on point A from my spawn? Does that mean that my team just kind of has a wall on point A and nobody can go inside of it and they have to do 5,000 damage in order for them to touch it so my team can heal up or get themselves, you know, together? Or, like, what? Honestly, I don't know what this means or, like, even really how I'm supposed to try to understand it. I really don't understand. So... They said that they've had really interesting playtests, and there's a lot of different ways that they can figure out exactly how important or how they should use it. You can do stuff like throw it in a fight from spawn like Hanzo, and it spans across the entire map. And 
this also means that shield gen is gone for the moment but honestly i don't really think any of you are thinking about that but yeah shield gen's gone now this is the second symmetra rework that we've gotten honestly do you guys think they should just scrap the character because they're really trying so hard to make her relevant and she's just not honestly i don't really know I've been talking about this for a while uh, on this video, and honestly, it's still been my, it's still mind blowing to me. What do you guys think about it? That's pretty much it. I'll see you guys later. Zerk to out.